So here we're given three different vectors, u, v, and w, and we're asked to do three different calculations. So for the first one, we're asked to find v dot w, which is of course the dot product between those two vectors. So we know for the dot product, what we're doing is we're taking the corresponding components between our two vectors, we multiply them together, and then add uh, for a total. So here, our x component for each one, uh, we've got negative 2 for v and negative 1 for w. So we multiply them. We're then going to add on the corresponding multiplication of the y components. So that's going to be 4 and negative 3. And we don't have any z components, so um, I'm just going to leave that off. It would just be 0 times 0. So if we simplify this, um, this is going to go to 2 and this is going to go to negative 12. So overall, we end up with an answer of um, negative 10. And we can see that this is like a scalar or just a number, um, which is why the dot product is sometimes also called the scalar product. All right, so we'll move on to the next part here, which is B. And here we want to find W cross U. So this is the cross product of those two vectors. Now remember this time the um, order that this operation is performed in does actually matter, unlike this one. If we had have done v, uh, sorry, if we had have done w dot v, we should have got exactly the same result. Okay, here it does matter. We're going to get something different if we were to do u cross w. So I'm going to substitute in our expressions for w and u. So negative i minus 3j needs to be crossed with 3i minus 1j. All right, so we need to expand this out. Each term needs to be multiplied by um, every other term in the other bracket. Okay, so we'll start off here. We've got negative i crossed with 3i. Now we know that a, a unit vector crossed by itself is going to go to zero, so that one's really easy to deal with. So the next one I'll consider is negative i crossed with negative um, 1j. So here we are going to get um, an actual um, something out that's not zero. Okay. So if we deal with the constants, first of all, we've got this is like negative 1 multiplied by negative 1. So overall, that's positive 1. And I'm going to use our little diagram to figure out whether it's a positive or a negative that falls out. So here we have i cross j. If we look at our diagram, i cross j, that's going in the direction of the arrow, so that means it's going to be a positive, and we always get the other one falling out. So i cross j is positive k. So this needs to be multiplied by positive k. All right, so the next one I'll focus on is negative 3j crossed with 3i. So negative 3 times 3 goes to negative 9 over all. And then we have j crossed with i. So if we look at our diagram here to help us out, j cross i, that is in the opposite direction to the arrow, so it's going to be a negative uh, that falls out, and it's also going to be the other one, so it needs to be multiplied by negative k. So negative 9 times negative k is going to be positive 9k. So we have one left, we need to do negative 3j cross with negative 1j. Now we have a unit vector crossed by itself here, so that means that it's going to go to zero. So overall, we can simplify this to be just 10k on its own. And I'll just make the note as well that we can see this is a vector because it's got a k associated with it. That is why that uh, cross products are sometimes called vector products because what falls out is uh, a vector. So we have one thing left and that's to find the angle between the vectors u and v. So we have two kind of options for which equation to use for this calculation. So one of them is based on cos of the angle between. And for this, we would do the dot product on the numerator and divide by um, the magnitude of each ve vector um, multiplied together. The other option we have is if we rely on sine, um, here the numerator changes to be the cross product of the two vectors but the denominator remains the same. So it's up to you which one uh, you would prefer to use um, in order to do the calculation. You should get exactly the same result no matter which one you pick. So I'm going to choose to pick this one here because I think calculating a dot product is a little bit easier than calculating a cross product and then computing its magnitude. So if we do go with this one here, all right, let's start with doing u dot v. 
So this is where we again take the components corresponding to each other, multiply them together, and then add the result. So if we go up here, we're looking at u and v. So for the corresponding um, i components, it's going to be 3 and negative 2. And then for the y components, um, it's going to be negative 1 and positive 4. So if we simplify this down, we're going to get negative 6 minus 4, which is negative 10. So now I might just compute each of these magnitudes, um, and then we can sub it all in a moment. So for the magnitude, remember we take our components, square them and add it together, and then take the overall square root. So for the magnitude here, our components are 3 and negative 1. So that means we do 3 squared and negative 1 squared here. So this is going to end up being 9 plus 1, which means we've got the square root of 10 for our magnitude. And if we do the same thing for V, going back up, our components were negative 2 and 4. So if we simplify that, we're going to get 4 plus 16, which is the square root of 20. All right, so we have all the information now. We can go back and substitute it into our equation for theta, the angle between those two vectors. So cos of theta is going to be equal to the dot product, which we found to be this negative 10, divided by our magnitudes um, multiplied together on the bottom line. So if we want to undo a cos, right, we need to do the cos inverse or arc cos to the other side. Cool. And we pop that into a calculator and the answer we come out with is 135 degrees. So since this is a 2D um, kind of question, like as in our vectors only have an X and a Y component, we can actually do a bit of a quick sketch to make sure that um, this angle kind of looks right visually. So if I do that, I'm going to sketch 3i um, minus 1j. So if I just, this is our xy. So 3i minus 1j, say so that's 3, that's 1. So that vector there is u. And then the other one we were looking at was um, the v vector. So negative 2i plus 4j. So negative 2i would be back in this direction, say like that. And 4i, let's say like here. So that there would be our v vector. So what we found is the angle between both of these, which would represent this one in here, and we found that to be 135. So from that visual check, it looks about right um, that this angle represents, yeah, about 135 degrees. So that's all there is uh, for this video.